Hi, I'm Brent Lemniscus. Welcome back to another episode of Data in the Wild, hosted by Data Meaning. Before we get started, don't forget to subscribe below and click on the bell to turn on notifications so that you are notified as soon as we release new videos. We're going to talk about creating a custom API connector using Matillion. Now before we get started, we have to first decide which type of connector we would like to create. So if we go up here to the project menu and go down to manage API profiles, you can see that there are two options here where we can manage our query profile or manage our extract profiles. If you need help deciding, you can click on this third option here at the bottom, which will bring up a uh, pop-up which describes the use cases or the differences between these two types of connectors. Uh, typically, the extract connector is used more for a data lake type scenario where we're just grabbing all the data and pulling it in. The API query connector offers some extra control as you're bringing in the data in with some of the filters that they have. So for the purpose of this presentation, we are going to go ahead and create an API query connector. So to do that, again, we're going to go to the project menu, go to manage API profiles and manage query profiles. Now, initially, you will see a list of the query profiles that Matillion offers out of the box at no additional cost, where you can look and connect to Facebook or Twitter or some of these other options available but we are going to create our own custom connector. So we're gonna come down here and go ahead and click on the plus sign. And this is just naming the profile that we are going to create. And we are going to create a profile called Float. Now Float is an internal tool that we use here at Data Meaning to manage our resources. So we are going to connect to their API in order to load some data. We can go ahead and click on the gear box here to see that we have just created an empty profile. No endpoints have been configured yet. Uh, this is blank and we are just going to go ahead and get started now. So to do this, we need to go ahead and create a new endpoint. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to copy the URL. So first we are going to name our endpoint. We're going to call this people because we're going to be loading people data and we can add a description here if we would like. We're gonna go ahead and skip that and go ahead and go to the next step. And we do have the option to either use a get or a post, but we will be getting data, so we will use the get. And we will paste our URL here. And you can see that the send button is now turned green. We can go ahead and click on send, but we're gonna get an error message because we haven't authenticated uh, with float in order to validate that we are able to pull data in. So as you can see down here, there is an authentication tab here, which is disabled. So we can go ahead and enable the authentication and select which type of authentication we're going to use. They have a basic authentication, a bearer token, OAuth, or API key value. We are going to use the bearer token option. So I'm going to go ahead and select bearer token and paste our bearer token here. Now, if you would like, you can go ahead and add some parameters. Uh, there are different parameter types that we can be adding, query or URI or header, uh, and you can fill this out as needed. We do not need to add any of those, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that for now. You can click on body here, and if you need to enter additional information here in the body, you can do that. And then the response is going to be the response that we get back when we send the request. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on send. And you can see that we do have a successful connection and data is being returned. I'm going to go ahead and click on log and view any of the extra information associated with that request. Now, if there was an issue, you can check the log here and get some error information to help troubleshoot the issue. We are good to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and click on next. So in step three here in the response configuration, this is where we select the pieces of data that we would like to bring in. You can deselect any of these options here uh, for our presentation here. We're just gonna go ahead and leave everything selected. We're gonna pull all of this information in. 
and move over here to the right where we have our paging options. Currently it's disabled, but we can go ahead and enable that. And out of the box, Micro, uh, Matillion offers four, or I'm sorry, five types of paging where we can do full path, we can do link header, we can do offset based, we can do cursor based, or we can do page based. And these are options where you just have to fill out the uh, options listed here on the right. And Matillion will take care of the coding portion of that for you, which is an extremely nice feature that we don't have to manually code that in. Uh, we are going to disable the paging for this presentation uh, as we don't need it for the data that we are pulling in. So we're going to go ahead and click next here. And again, we can see in the data preview here that data is coming in. We can take a quick peek at the configuration review that we have here and verify in the log here that an API query profile was successfully created. And we can go ahead and click on finish. Now we see here that the people RSD file has been created and we have that information here. But what we want to do now is take a look at the advanced mode. And we can see that Matillion has done all of the coding for you where we are naming the attributes and setting their data types. And it's always a good practice to confirm that the data types have been set correctly. But Matillion handles this for you automatically uh, so that you as a developer do not have to go in and do this uh, as some other tools make you do this uh, all, all, all on your own. But we are good to go here. We can come down here to the test and go ahead and click on our people endpoint and see that data is coming through. And we can go ahead and click on OK as our query profile has been created. So now that we have our query profile, we need to set up the job in order to pull that data in. We're gonna go over here in our project and we have a folder called API Demo. And when we right click on that folder, we have the option to add an orchestration job or add a transformation job. So for those of you who are new to Matillion, the orchestration job is Typically, if you think of ELT, it's typically the E and the L portion of ELT where you're extracting and loading the data. And the transformation jobs are when you are doing the transformations, manipulating the data, filtering, converting, and things of that nature. So we are going to extract the data. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new orchestration job. And we will call this Git Load Data switch to that new job now and this is the empty canvas that gets created when we create a new orchestration and you can see down here on the bottom now we have different components available for the orchestration if we created a transformation the option down here for the components would be different they are tailored specific to either an orchestration or transformation depending on which job we are in and we are looking to pull in API data. So I'm gonna do a quick search here for API, and I'm going to pull in the component here, API query. Now, we can see here that we have all of these configuration options available to us as we create the API query. So we're going to go ahead and name this. We will call it git load data. I can click on okay. And we are going to rename our component here and we are going to call this get load data. And you have an option for basic or advanced authentication. We're going to go ahead and leave it as basic for now. And in the authentication method, we are going to select bearer token. And when we do that, we can see that a new line item has been created here for us to enter our bearer token. Now, one of the things that you may say is, well, I just entered the bearer token when I created the query profile. Why do I have to enter it again here? And the answer is the bearer token entered in when the query profile was being created was just for that specific case where we are getting the uh, information we need to create the RSD file. It is not stored in the component in any way. 
it is solely there to create the RSD files. So when you run your actual job, you need to authenticate each time that your job runs. And there are a couple different ways to do it. Uh, Matillion does have a password manager, which we're not going to get into in this presentation here, but you can store it in the password manager or you can store it in a variable. We are going to just store it in the component for the purpose of this presentation and this will allow us to connect to our flow data and pull the information that we need. Now the profile option, this is where we are going to select the profile that we just created which is the float profile. We don't necessarily need to create any connection options but if we did we would enter those here. Now when we're selecting the data source, we have to decide which one we would like to select. We just created a people RSD file, so we are going to go ahead and select people. And then from that people RSD file, we have to figure out which piece of data we would like to bring in. We're going to go ahead and bring all the columns in. And then we can set our data source filter. So this is where you have a couple of different additional options here that the query profile offers that are not in the extract profile. So we can go ahead and set those here if we would like. We are going to leave all these as default for now. And we will leave the warehouse database and schema as the environment default as well. The one option that we need to fill in before we can complete this process is the target table. Now we are going to enter this data into a table called float data. And if we switch over to our Snowflake instance here, we will go ahead and refresh and show that we don't have a float people table. It doesn't exist right now. So we're going to go back to our job. We have all green OK statuses here, so we're going to go ahead and run our job. I'm going to right click on the canvas and select run job. And you can see over here in the task history that the job is running and it has run successfully. You can click on this little plus sign here and get some extra information regarding the job that just ran. If you would like, you can go ahead and click on this arrow here on the right which will bring up a more detailed history or details of the job that just ran. As your jobs get more complex, this can be rows and rows of data. So you can go through here and get some additional information. Uh, we can see that we inserted 50 records into our database. So we are gonna go back and take a look at Snowflake. We're gonna refresh and see that we have now created a float data table. Now if we look at this down here at the bottom, we can see that all of the columns are created and all of the data types have been assigned for us. So we're going to come over here and take a look at our float data and we are going to run the select statement and see that data is now being entered into this table that we just created in Matillion or in Snowflake and loaded via Matillion API. And that's it. That's all you need to do in order to access an API and load data into a database using Matillion. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell to turn on notifications so that you are notified as we release new videos. Thank you for watching.